Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Shirley, David, Henry, everybody there. God bless you. Great to see you all tonight. God bless you. God bless you. Good to see you all tonight. The Lord bless you greatly. Our Instagram friends are jumping in fast. The people on uh, YouTube and uh, Facebook, I hope you also had a great day. You're welcome tonight in Jesus' name. Always uh, excited to see you guys. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. So now, um, I'm just going to share one or two things tonight. Rose, you're welcome. Yeah. Rose, you're welcome. Finola, you're welcome. Ellen, you're welcome. God bless you. Hallelujah. Um, everybody joining us tonight, you're welcome as well. Arisa, you're welcome. Neil, you're welcome. God bless you all. I hope you're enjoying this good weather. Everybody joining us tonight, you're welcome in Jesus' name. Both the ones I can see and the ones I cannot see yet. Hallelujah. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. God bless you all. All right. Um, you know, we've been talking about the power of God's word. The power of God's word. And uh, tonight I'm going to touch briefly on the impact. What impact does God's word make on our lives? So, so it's important because sometimes uh, people just think, oh, yes, the Bible is the word of God. Yes, the Bible is the word of God. But it's also when you know the value it has to your life, it, it changes your approach, you know, and it help, helps you with the kind of value you put on it as well. Amen. So the word of God is key. God would never do anything outside of his word. God would never do anything without his word. <laughs> you need to know that. That is the basis for operation. That's the basis on which God operates with everybody. All right? His word. So if God's word, if the value you place on God's word equals to the value you place on God. So it's important you, you understand that. Amen? The word of God, it has power. When the word of God is effectively applied, there are some results we see or some impacts that we perceive. Amen. So we're going to go into all that now. Amen. So um, another thing I wanted to understand is God wanted to demonstrate to us the power of his word. So he used his word to make heaven and earth. Everything that you see today is created by God's word. Everything that we see, God used his word. The sky, the seas, the mountains, you know, everything. I would say the first day God said, let there be light and there was light. Light be. Then God went and he created the firmament. Separated the heavens from the earth. Then the next day God made dry lands. The rocks you see. The mountains, God created them. He called for the dry land. God created the sun, moon, and the stars. He separated the day from the night. The seasons of life. The fishes, the birds, God made them using his words. Why did he have to do that? He was trying to teach us that when I send my word to you, what you have seen around you, that same word I've given you will produce for you. The word of God is the same as God himself. And the potency of God's word is limitless. <laughs> Come on, say it with me. The power of God's word is limitless. Come on, put it down. The power of God's word is limitless. One more time. The power of God's word is limitless. Limitless. It has no limit the power of god's word is limitless <laughs> hallelujah say with me again the power of god's word is limitless it is it it doesn't have limit at all so if you look around you anything that you can see 
they are made from God's word. So the word of God is the raw material for creation. The raw, the, the, the word of God is the raw material for creation. <laughs> you can put that down if you want. The word of God is the raw material for creation. That is what God uses to, to, to create his words. The word of God is the raw material for God's creation. So when God wanted to create heaven and earth, his words, he sent forth his word, the book of Isaiah, the Bible says his word healed them and delivered them from all their distresses. His word healed them and delivered them from all their distresses. Put that down with me. The word of God is the raw material for creation. That is the raw material. Nothing can change that. God doesn't change. The Bible says, I am the Lord, I change not. He's using the same raw material you use at the beginning of the world is the one he's still using now. And when you pick that raw material, you will, you will, be, you will become co-creator with God. When you apply God's word, you become a, you become a co-creator with him. By the, through the application of the word, God's word in our lives, we become co-creators with him. Are you with me? So if you want to become a co-creator with God, apply his word, not once, not twice, consistently in every area of your life. As you begin to apply God's word consistently, you become a co-creator. The application of God's word by you and I makes us to become co-creators with him because now we become enforcers of his kingdom. Hallelujah. Through the use of God's word, we become enforcers of his kingdom. Ex we become people, you know, when we say, let your kingdom come. The kingdom of God comes by power, by word. By word of power. The Bible says he has, he's holding everything together by the word of his power. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? He's holding everything together by the word of his power. Another one, another one says, by the power of his word. God is holding everything together by the power of his word. Come on now. Renetta, you're not listening to me. Come on now. I'm, I want you to call, 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 call Will. Come on. It's too early to sleep now. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Shelly, come on. He's holding everything together by the power of his word. God is holding everything together by the power of his word. Everything. Not some things, but everything. is holding everything together by the power of his word so i want to encourage you tonight <laughs> if you doubt the efficacy of god's word you are making a big mistake don't doubt it don't doubt it okay i want to show you so we're talking about tonight the, the impact so if you say i apply the word of god what does it generate what does the word of god create in my life when i apply it what impact does it make you know, it's like when you drink water, it quenches your thirst if you are thirsty. Am I right? If you put salt in food, it flavors it, gives you flavor. All right? But when I apply the word of God, what am I to expect? Or what are the impact? Number one, if you go to Romans chapter 10, verse 17, Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it says, So then faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. One of the impact of God's word, it makes you faith strong. It creates strong faith in you. When you keep hearing God's word, keep hearing God's word, it creates strong faith. When you keep hearing God's word, it creates strong faith in your life. So the more of God's word you hear, the more your faith is built. Because Bible says faith comes by hearing. It comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So when you keep hearing God's word, faith comes. But what is the value of faith? The Bible says, they that are born of God overcome the world. And this is the victory that overcome the world, even our faith. So your faith puts you at the overcoming end, makes you a victor. But Jesus said, if you have faith like a grain of mustard seed, you shall say, you that have faith. You shall say to this mountain, be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea. He said, and if you not doubt in your heart, you shall have what you say. So the point is, faith is what makes you an overcomer. Faith makes you to be able to remove mountain. Faith 
puts you in the driving seat of your destiny. Am I making any sense now? So it's important that you realize that. So I want to encourage you to know that when the word of God keeps coming, you see, you may not feel faith, but faith, have you, I mean, have you ever been in a situation, I've been there before, that uh, I face a problem. You know, when problem comes, they don't tell you they're coming. It just comes by surprise. You know, you just, I mean, you just face a problem. And uh, when the problem comes, have you ever had a situation whereby you were not thinking about it, a scripture just rose up within you? Has it ever, ever happened to you before? A scripture rises within you. Why? Because the scripture was there. Faith to overcome that problem has been built already in you through the word of God that you've known. So you've already had that faith built inside of you. So immediately that problem rose up. So this, this is so it's because you've been hearing the word of God over and over again. And that word has settled within you and has created some powerful foundations inside of you. So when problem strikes, that's what just comes out. I remember I shared this story a couple of times before. I was driving the car one day and actually there's a place called, it's just like a black spot. You see in some places in Ireland, people have put some like shrines there. That's on the side of the road. So tell us, that implies that a couple of accidents have happened there. And maybe loved one wanted to memorialize their family members or something like that. And as I was driving, this particular place is a dark spot. I mean, it's an accident spot anyway. It's like a voice or something, like a dark thing came into the car and said, you're going to die. I mean, the thing was so, it's as if somebody was with me in the car. And suddenly, this scripture came up from within me, Psalm 118, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of God. That verse just rose up from within me. So faith to, to conquer that problem was already living in me. So that problem didn't catch me by surprise. It didn't catch my faith by surprise. And I spoke it, and I spoke it, and I spoke, you know, even the way the thing happened, it's enough to make me lose control of my car because it's as if somebody came into your car and said, you're going to die. <laughs> but obviously, I'm still here. I didn't die. But the issue is, I'm giving you that example to know. So when, when, when you keep taking in the word of God, words of faith, words of victory, you keep thinking of God's promises over and over again, faith rises. I didn't feel the faith in my muscle, but when problem knocked, my faith rose up and swallowed it up. So when problem comes, your faith will rise up and what? Swallow it up. So one of the things that the word of God creates, it produces faith. It produces a God kind of faith. You know, I've heard people, I remember I was in secondary school and I went, I went to um, a, 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 burden, a burden school, you know, so it was, uh, so it, it's quite nice because it gives you, it helps you socially, you get to meet a lot of people as well. But we all live in a dorm, different dormitories. In my dormitory, I think uh, we had about maybe 30 or 40 of us. It's a long building, a long building. It's, it's a hostel, a okay, hostel. So we're there in my own block. So the hostels are blocks by blocks. So in, and in each block, there are two massive rooms so i was in one of the wings and this one of one of the roommates that were, the guy screamed from his sleep he screamed you know and something has beaten him so we thought it was snake or, or scorpion stung him because he screamed from his sleep and he held his leg all of us woke up we ran to him we brought the lantern because it was lights out. We switched on the light to look, but there was nothing there. I mean, but the guy was holding his leg. Blood was not coming out. Nothing was coming out. But for without a doubt, something struck this guy. That was something. But so by the time I got there, I needed some spiritual thing because we couldn't see any physical mark. There was no, but the guy was still crying. It's as if the thing was still biting him. Do all of us were there. He was screaming. The scripture just rose up from within me. You know, we didn't plan it. You know, we all woke up at the same time from sleep. The scripture rose up within me. And like a mighty lion, the spirit of God spoke from within me. I said, I come against that spirit of death. 
you that and i began to pray even the people that were not uh, christians or born again or uh, they began to say amen <laughs> you know when trouble comes everybody is converted <laughs> When trouble comes, everybody becomes a believer straight away. We prayed. And as I prayed, this guy just fell back to sleep. And so we, we, we so you know, everybody, he just he, in the middle of the prayer, boom, he just it was it was knocked out and he went to sleep. So we went to bed, all of us went to sleep, you know. And we woke up the next day, he was fine. It never happened to him again. He was fine. Now let's assume. It is doubt and fear and, and all manner of things are inside me. I will have been scared like other persons. The word of God produces faith and faith produces victory. Don't play with the word of God. I listen to the word of God. I study the word of God every day. I think about the word of God every day because I know the benefit. The devil doesn't tell you he's bringing problems. <laughs> if all the problems tell us before they come, we will have prepared. That is why you live by faith. That's why, so no matter what's coming, just take your time in God's word and let the Holy Spirit prepare you. Okay, so the word of God produces faith. Faith produces victory, all right? Faith is victory. Faith is victory. Okay, I'm encouraging you. Faith is what? Victory. Faith is victory. I'm just telling you now, you need to understand that faith is victory. It brings victory, all right? Who is it? Our first John chapter 5, verse 4. Who is it that overcomes the world? How it, it said, it, this is the victory that overcomes the world, rather, even our faith. Okay, by he said, it is by our faith that we triumph. Put it down. Faith equals victory. Come on, everybody, put it down. Faith, yeah. word equals faith. Faith equals victory. Come on now. Come on, I'm waiting for you, Arisa. Put it down. Put it down. Shelly, put it down. And, and, put it down. If you know, everybody put it down. Word, word equals faith equals victory. So, word, faith, victory. Come on, let's go. Word, faith, victory. Everybody, let's do it now. Word, faith, victory. So, it's very, very important. If you get that line right, that's it. When the word of God when the word of God keeps coming, keeps coming, don't get tired. That sometimes try to you hear the word of God. Oh man, I've heard so much. Keep listening to it. Keep listening to it because it's putting some defenses inside you that when the attack comes, boom, you will find yourself standing strong. You will find yourself standing strong. I have been in situations whereby everything was not looking good. It was as if everything is nothing was looking good it was not looking good at all the only assurance i had was the word of god that was inside of me you know i told you on uh, tuesday i don't know tuesday i told you when the word of god is outside of you it's of no benefit it is the word of god that is in you the soldier marches on his stomach it is the word of god that is in you that is beneficial not the one that is outside because it is within you that victory starts victory or defeat starts from within i repeat Victory or defeat starts from within, all right? So it's very, very important. Don't let anybody talk you out of that. Anything that you doubt, anytime you doubt or you think you cannot achieve is because your word level in that area is low. Therefore, your faith in that area is low. Therefore, victory is at large. Anytime I'm facing a problem and I'm afraid, yeah, I do get afraid sometimes. I'm tempted to be afraid sometimes. Or I seem, I seem disillusioned, or I seem confused. Anytime that happens to me, I know that problem I'm facing, I need to develop my faith. And so I go back to the Word of God, start studying the Word of God, the promise of God, I take time in God's presence. I keep doing that over and over a period of time until when the problem, the, 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 when, I, when the problem comes to me or the knowledge of the problem comes back to me, I, I don't feel the fear anymore. When that fear is gone, when I'm, when I went through the eyes of faith, I can see victory. I know victory has come. I'll take it again. Anytime you face a problem, I mean, I'm not talking about, you know, when the problem first comes the first time, it could throw you back. But if you have enough in you, you, you will quickly gain your, your composure back 
you'll get back on your feet. Are you with me now? You'll get everything back quickly, okay? So that's one step. But if for a period of time you are getting sleepless night over an issue, you don't know what to do, you are confused, go back to the Word of God. Yes, call for prayers. We're here to pray for you and help you, to support you. But you will see that even when we pray for you, we are praying the Word of God. Then get some scriptures on top. Pray, talk, talk, think on those scriptures, meditate on them, chew on them, chew on them, chew on them. If you chew on them for a couple of days, you'll find out that fear, because fear tolerated is faith contaminated. Fear tolerated. So every time I'm afraid, I'm worried about something, then I know that I, I, there's some, I need to do some homework. I need to do some homework. Test and trials shows you the strength of your faith. I take it again. Test and trials shows you the strength of your faith. So pain sometimes, even fear sometimes, is a signal to you that you need to go back and do some homework. So word, faith, victory. There is nothing that you want in this world, in, the, in the, your life, that the word of God cannot help you with the faith and the wisdom that you need for it. So one of the impact of God's word, copiously, listen to you, faith. And faith brings victory. Everybody needs faith because everybody needs victory. Therefore, everybody needs the word of God. I was going to say, I don't need the word of God, but you want victory in your life? <laughs> I cannot. Life is a product of personal adventure. I cannot eat food for you. <laughs> you know, I like say, oh, and eat, I'm very hungry. Eat the food for me. And it will come to my stomach. No, life is a product of personal adventure. You need to engage with the word yourself. Come on, put it down. Say with me, life is a product of personal adventure. Help me somebody, put that down. Life is a product of personal adventure. I'll wait for you to type it down. Life is a product of personal adventure. You need to engage. You know, there's some problems that are so personal, you can't even tell your best friend. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, have you been there before? You have some problems that are so personal, you can't even share with your best friend. Because life is a product of personal adventure. So you need to engage. 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 Hallelujah. Come on, say engage. Life is a product of personal adventure. So you need to engage yourself. You need to personally engage, all right? Okay, I'm going to show you one or two things again. The impact of God's word. The next impact of God's word uh, that we're going to be touching on tonight. Hallelujah. The next impact of God's word is, let's go to 1 Peter. 1 Peter 23 to 25. 1 Peter 23 to 25. So, you know, all those people that believe in, uh, someone will do my prayer for me. Somebody read my Bible for me. Somebody will do my fasting for me. <laughs> There's only so much that they can do for you. Honestly speaking, I'm telling you, you know, I'm from a culture where we always we always have a middleman. We always have a, you know, in Africa, I was saying on Sunday, there's a demigod. There's a demigod that helps you contact the big God. No, 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 no. Life is a product of personal adventure. If God should give your friends the ideas he wants to use to liberate you, if they know the idea will help them, they will use it first. <laughs> <laughs> First Peter chapter 1 from verse 23 to 25. Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but the incorruptible, but the incorruptible through the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Because all flesh is grass, and all the glory of man is as flower of the grass, the grass withers. And its flower falls away. But the word of God endures forever. Now, this is the word which by the gospel was preached to you. <laughs> Having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but the incorruptible word of God. The word of God produces divine life. The incorruptible life. Another impact of God's word Everyone that knows Jesus Christ and has accepted Jesus is through the word of God. The word of God brings the conversion. It brings the transformation. All right? I've been being born again, 
not of corruptible seed, but the incorruptible seed of God's word. The word of God produces divine life, the incorruptible life. It produces the incorruptible, the divine life. We don't only have the human, we have the divine life. That's why the Bible says if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation, is a new species of being. Are you with me? You are a new species of being. So what I'm trying to bring in a perspective for you is that as a child of God, the word of God produces that divine life. He said, my son. See, a lot of people don't know that the word of God, that the, the new life that we have in Christ, it came by the word of God. The word of God produces divine life. The God kind of life. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but the incorruptible word of God, it produces eternal life. It produces the divine life. So every so when you are speaking the word of God to somebody, I mean, I've heard people that never met Jesus Christ, and when we share the word of God with them, they receive that word. And the person that was hell bound is now heaven bound. That was a citizen of darkness, now became light. The word of God gives us the divine life. Anywhere, historically, if you have read history, anywhere where the word of God is preached or the gospel is preached, we have observed that there is civilization there. Advancement. Another thing, the impact of God's word, it brings advancement. Even in Bible times, you know, in the days of the scripture, women were another, some, if you read some writers in the days of the Bible, women were never valued. But when Paul brought the gospel, he said, in Christ Jesus, there is neither female nor male, no slave nor free. Through the word of God, there was advancement. There was human liberation. It was uh, William Wilberforce. Through his knowledge of God's word, he went and fought against the issue of slave trading. The word of God made him snow. This is not, so the word of God brings civilization. You see people that are barbaric, people that don't have a clue, people that uh, backward thinkers, when the word of God comes into a community, you start seeing people flourishing. You see a lot of, you see uh, advancement in hearts, in creativity, in invention. If you have read this book, you forget the book, Peter Masters, Men of Purpose and Men of Destiny. Those are two different books. Some of the great text explorers, inventors, they were actually Christian. If you know them, if you have heard of Michael Faraday, the guy that brought about the electromagnetic induction, he's a Christian, Clark Maxwell, and Bruce Fleming. That guy that got the penicillin. I mean, all these great physicists, chemists, these guys, they they wrote themselves that the reason for their intelligence is because of their work with God. When you re I, I read of this guy in that book, Clark Maxwell, they said he spent hours in the enjoyment of his Bible. He spent hours. And through that, this guy, his story, when he first started as a young man, he was not intelligent. It was not bright. Suddenly, it became the greatest physicist of the 19th century. And he alluded to the fact that it is through the reading of scripture that things began to open up to him. Can I encourage you today that there's something about the word of God that makes you sophisticated. It makes you become a great thinker. It enlarges your, 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 your mind capacity. It enables your creativity. It generates divine life. So don't play with the I enjoy scriptures because they really make me wise. I've seen so many intelligent people that are not wise. They do everything, but God, when you begin to, some of the biggest problems I've faced in my life, they've been solved through scriptures. The impact of scripture, it makes you a problem solver. When you are very good at the word of God, it makes you a problem solver. It makes you a problem solver. I, I want to encourage you today to put a lot of uh, value on your time in God's word. Either by listening to me like this, or you're doing it personally, the word of God, the word of God. I listen to the word of God more than music. I listen to the word of God more than news. I listen to the word of God more than anybody else. Why? Because the strength of my life is generated from the word of God. There is nobody that I listen to more than the word of God. There's no human today. The word of God is more important. If you put everything together and you say the volumes 
that I've devoured, I've devoured more volumes of God's word than any other volume of anything in my entire life. Why? Because I've discovered, you know, when you discover a treasure, you never make him. I, I've discovered many Christians have not discovered it, the real treasure of scripture. When you discover the treasure of scripture, you become a treasure to your world. When you become, when you discover the power of God's word, you become empowered. When you discover the creative force in God's word, you become a creator. We are co-creators with God through the agency of his word. So I want to encourage you tonight. If you are someone that has been taking the word of God for granted, stop. Stop taking the word of God for granted. It's time for you to start taking the word of God seriously. Everything that God made through his word. The Bible says he's holding everything together by the power of his word. Those promises, that great future you want, the word of God will hold it for you. It will not hold it from you, it will preserve it for you. Anything that seems to have eluded you, I see things turn around. I see change come. I see breakthrough coming away. The word of God makes you sophisticated. The word of God makes you creative. The word of God puts in you divine life. The word of God produces faith. You know, people don't pay problematic people. They pay problem solvers. There was a day, there was uh, a lecturer he, he, was, he was on a show, they were interviewing him, and he said it's very sad that they are paying sports people more money than a person like him, a lecturer that gives a lot of great information and train a lot of students to make this community and society better. And the interviewer asked him, about how many students do you uh, train to graduate? And he said, okay, a couple of hundred students every year are trained. I mean, they've gone through my training one way or the other. They said, how many people does a sport guy entertain every weekend? This guy said, hundreds of thousands. He said, so who should be paid more? You, in a year, 400 students graduate and you train them. This guy every weekend, this guy, he entertains hundreds of thousands of people who is solving more problems say yes you are solving a problem but you're also solving a type of problem the question i'm asking you today is the more god's word you have in you the greater opportunity you will have to become a problem solver people don't pay problem creators they pay problem solver the word of god helps us not only to solve our problems but to help the people around us to solve their problems the Lord bless you. I hope you are getting something tonight. I just wanted to put, put this across to you tonight. And uh, one of the ways, sometimes you don't need to feel like studying the Bible. It is the value you had to it. When I hold the word of God, I see it as God's love letter to me. I take it very personal. That God is talking to me. I don't take it as, I take the word of God as personal. I see God talking to me directly because it is true. I don't think when I'm studying, oh, that word would be good for Margaret. No, I'm the one that is here. I'm the one he's talking to. So stop thinking about your cousin that you wish we hear this. You, would, you will hear it later, but you'll hear it first for yourself and let it be beneficial. I want you to know that anywhere the word of God is missing, solution is missing. He sent his word, Psalm 107 verse 20. God sent his word. His word healed them and deliver them from all their destructions, their distresses. Wherever the word of God is, there is deliverance. From any kind of problem. You know, someone says, but Solomon, I know three scriptures. I know so many scriptures. Not that happened for me. I've been there too before. God, how come we know so many scriptures? We're not seeing results. Wait. The word of God is like a seed. Like a seed. When it germinates, it starts with the seed, goes into the ground, it dies, then it comes alive, it germinates, and begin to flourish. Let me tell you something. When your cloud, when the cloud is full of water, it empties itself on the earth. Keep filling your cloud, your faith cloud. Keep filling your faith cloud. When you keep filling your faith cloud, when it's full, rain will come. <laughs> Did you hear what I said? When your faith cloud is filled, 
the reign of breakthrough, of victory will fall. Today, some of you, you are still feeling your cloud. It's as though nothing is happening. I was there before. I've been there several times in several situations in my life. And it's as though, but I kept feeling the cloud. I feel when my cloud was full of faith, the rain of blessings came. The rain of victory came. Don't stop feeling your cloud. It's always darkest before dawn. Never quit. Keep feeling. Hallelujah. Did you get something tonight? Don't forget Sunday is Father's Day. Sunday is Father's Day, so remember to pray for your dad. Remember to get your dad a gift. Remember to bless them. Even if your dad was not a good person, I would advise you, forgive the person. As a gift, give the person the gift of forgiveness and bless them. And some people, they are not your earthly father. They are either your spiritual father or they are the one that have been standing there for you. And some women, you are both father and mother. It's also your day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because some mothers, they are the father and the mother. All right? And there are some men, they are the mom and the dad. We celebrate you. Hallelujah. I want you to look out for your, take out your communion. Take out your communion. This communion, now I want to make a fresh commitment. Now, Lord, I am committing myself to the study of God's word and to the value, I pay value, not on some part of the scripture, on all of scriptures, all right? And, and, and the power and the impact of that word will be felt in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. The impact of God's word, it will produce faith in me, in the name of Jesus. It will, pro to, 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 it will, enlighten, it will uh, empower me, make me more creative. It will, it, will, it, will, it will strengthen me. Hallelujah. It will release into me divine life. Lord, I said, take this communion tonight. I remember that Jesus came to bring me the word of God and the life of God and all that God has for me. And from today, I put greater value on God's word than the words of men or my words. I receive the word of God as a final authority in my life. If God's word said it, I will align by it and my life will change in Jesus' name. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Lord, I give you praise. Lord, I honor you tonight. Hallelujah. The word of God is working for you. The word of God will work for you. It will walk in you. It will walk through you. The word of God is working for you. It will walk in you to walk through. I break the grip of hell. Wherever the devil is trying to hold you back, I speak victory over you. I say your faith will find freedom of expression. I pray as you study the word of God, you will get revelation of God's word. Your spiritual eyes will be open. Your spiritual ears will be open. You will get divine direction from God in the name of Jesus. You will get divine direction. The word of God will become enjoyable for you. You will not be sleeping off when you are studying the Bible. You will be awake and alert. And through the study of God's word, your faith will grow and get strong. And you break new grounds in Jesus' precious name. I just want to encourage you tonight. Keep at it. Don't give up. Please, Sunday, don't forget our Sunday service at St. Mary's Road at our new church building at St. Mary's Chapel. 10 at half 10 Sunday morning. If you're in Aklo, Wiklo, you're in Aklo, come and join us. It's going to be amazing. I also want to encourage you for those people that help us every Saturday. Please be there as usual at 10 at uh, 11, 11 o'clock on Saturday morning. I also want to encourage you. Father's Day is a special day. Please make sure, Bible says, honor your father and your mother that it may be well with you, that you may live long. So don't dishonor them, no matter what they've done. Honor them. If tonight you guys are always an amazing givers, you are very generous. If the Lord lays it in your heart to give, I want you to. You can give by PayPal or the bank transfer. All right, and the link is up there. You can just Google our church website, Christian Community Church Arklo, and click on the giving tab, or you can just give by PayPal at Pastor Tosh. And the Lord will increase you. The Lord will bless you. You will not lack any good thing. You will not beg. You will not borrow. In the name of Jesus, I speak blessing over you. I speak from the blessing of God's word that is in me. I release the same blessing to you. There is no distance in the spirit. 
for those of you that are giving before the service actually giving right now the, i speak a hundred foot return over you right now in jesus precious name please if you have been blessed let us know send us texts send us messages let your share and uh, and like and love let your friends know about how you've been blessed go to our church website go to the google page go and comment on our church how you've been blessed come on if you want to give us five star give us five star come on go and then go and subscribe to us on youtube on instagram on facebook on twitter go and love and write something if you have been blessed i want to say thank you to all of you that are watching us from ireland from germany from romania from nigeria from uk from us and canada we love you thank you for your faithfulness and your consistency god bless you and remember the word of god produce victory in Jesus' name. Bye-bye. Have a great evening. Thank you so much. Bye.